Those who have seen a live performance go terribly wrong. What happened? When I was little, my parents took me to see a production of Annie. During her first big song, the girl who played Annie just peed everywhere. Under the spotlight, she kept singing. For which I give her major credit. After the song and scene ended, a bunch of stagehands in makeshift orphan costumes came on stage and mopped it up. I'll never forget it. Whoever thought of turning stagehands into makeshift orphans to clean up the mess without stopping the show is a genius. I don't know if this counts or not, but a few years ago, I was on one of those haunted hay rides, where they load people into hay carts and pull them with tractors, through trails and fields, where spooky scenes and actors are waiting to scare you. Well, at one point, an actor dressed like a zombie came shuffling toward us slipped in the mud and went right under the tractor. We all thought it was part of the show until the ride was cut short and an ambulance showed up. At the House of Blues in New Orleans they had an alternative band opening for Slayer. The show was sponsored by Heineken, and they were selling it in plastic bottles. Well the opening band was on and the crowd wasn't pleased. The bottles began to fly and hit the band members so they were out of there. I felt bad for them, but honestly whoever picked them to open for Slayer probably deserves a few bottles to the head. And that's exactly why alcohol is served in plastic bottles at events. Saw the music major student come out on stage to play a piano recital, and he slid right off the overly waxed piano bench right onto the floor before playing the first note. The audience laughed because they thought maybe it was part of his act, but it wasn't, and it took him 15 minutes behind stage thereafter to regain his confidence. I honestly felt sorry for him, even though it was hilarious at the moment. This wouldn't have been nearly as painful or hilarious if it hadn't taken him 15 minutes to recover. I've been in a performance that's gone terribly wrong. Luckily it wasn't my fault. It was a drama production so it's not really too big a deal. Pretty much the lead character had two points in the play, about one stroke three and two stroke three of the way through, where he was set up for lines that were very similar. At the line that was supposed to be one stroke three of the way through the play, he said the one from two stroke three through the play, causing the responses to continue from there. I don't think anyone realized they had skipped to the wrong lines until several lines later, at which point it was impossible to go back. TLDR. We skipped almost half the play because of the mixed up line. One of the openers for a popular local band was just, so strange. She was wearing PJs, brought out her laptop and sat on a couch, and rapped her own lyrics along to popular songs. It sounded horrible, and people were blatantly on their phones and having conversations instead of listening to her. She called out the audience for being rude and walked off stage about to cry. It was just, weird. At a comedy club in London, the comedian who was doing horribly after barely a minute on stage started asking his hecklers which landmark he should go and jump off. That's pretty cool of him to keep going. I was a light and sound tech. The spotlight required two levers to operate. One to get it warm, the other to turn the bulb on. So you could idle it on warm and quickly turn it on when needed. It was acting up a bit so was decided to not use the keep on warm setting in the last spotlight call we would take it down and see what was the matter. But first time running this comedy show, made it clear to main actress when the spotlight will be on and when it will be off. In the middle of the comedy show she decides to improv and yells out spotlight please I panic and hit the warm up lever. Of course the light doesn't go on. Two minutes later it turns on. The audience thought it was part of the act. There was a lot of yelling about it after the show. Improvise this. B. Does the circus count? Because I saw the trapeze artist fall off of the wire. From really high up. No net underneath. She lived, but broke pretty much every bone in her body. I was like 8. It was horrifying. A live performance of Rosencrantz and Guildenstern are dead. Both Rosencrantz and Guildenstern forgot their lines. Rosencrantz said, Ooh, I think I saw something over there he sprinted off stage for a few seconds and they skipped about 20 minutes of the show to cut straight to act 3, I was Rosencrantz. During a high school performance of Hamlet, we had identical twins playing Rosencrantz and Guildenstern. Several of the actors legitimately could not tell them apart, and when he screwed it up during a live performance they quickly lapsed into stage direction from RNGR dead and played it for laughs. 
I went to a Van Morrison concert and his daughter was the opener. Van Morrison is a cranky old curmudgeon. During his daughter's performance, there were some feedback issues, which the sound guy quickly fixed. When Van came on stage, he brought the sound guy up and screamed at him into the mic in front of the entire audience. Later in the show, there was a quiet moment between songs. Someone from the audience yelled out play brown eyed girl Van looked straight at the guy and viciously yelled, who the frick invited you? Van Morrison didn't even show up to his own Hall of Fame induction. Counting Crows performed in lieu of him. It sort of considered a milestone in their then fledgling career. I directed a play in middle school in which the lead role was a sick woman in her house. The girl that played the lead role was to wear a robe and sit upright in a bed at center stage for a large portion of the play. Everyone learned their lines and played their parts perfectly. The lead actress, however, went commando on the day of the actual play. Guess how we, as in the entire school, figured that out. Clearly she was afraid of everyone seeing her underwear. Years ago in Paris, I saw my first ballet, Swan Lake. As I remember it, a Canadian prima donna, Karen Kane was the swan and Rudolf Nureyev, SP, was the principal dancer. She flitted across the stage and leapt into his arms whereupon he promptly dropped her. This was staged at a temporary stage behind the Louvre Museum. The floor of the stage was plywood that I remember going wong 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 ringing in waves at the concussion of the fall. The little mini swans flitted in a circle around her for a couple minutes and I turned to the chaperone and said that wasn't supposed to happen. Was it to which he shook his head. She soon collected herself and they went on and did not look back or acknowledge it. It's Rudolf Nureyev, and he is one of my favorite male dancers. It still must have been a pleasure to watch even with a slight mishap such as that. Once watched an American female comedian, don't remember her name, completely bomb at a festival called Latitude in England. It was so painful to watch she had to leave the stage halfway through in tears. She was among other famous comedians and a giant crowd. When I was in middle school I was in the play Winnie the Pooh as Rabbit. The kid playing Pooh forgot all of his lines during one of the scenes where it was just me and him on stage. So we improvised the scene and kind of bumbled into the next scene. It was the night that my parents had come to see the play, so after the play I asked them how bad we had ruined the scene. But my parents apparently had no idea that we were improvising. They thought it was all a part of the play. During that same play, I don't remember if it was the same night, the kid that was playing Ru was taking too long to get into her costume, so the girl playing Kanga ran dramatically across stage yelling where is my baby? WHO stole him? The crowd was pretty amused. I have fond memories of middle school theater because of exactly this sort of crap. Grew up in the 90s. God I love the 90s. I saw both Nirvana and Mudhoney play a $5 all ages show at the Crazy Horse in Boise, Idaho. Different dates. Mudhoney was so stoned they played the same song twice in a row. They got a few chords in and stopped and started laughing. So did everyone else. Kurt Cobain was so fricked up that he fell down while playing guitar twice. Saw a youth production of The King and I with a 30-ish male director casting himself of The King. The King's red satin pants were a little too tight and he had no underwear on beneath. Combined with the overhead lighting, you would just see this shiny, bouncing moose knuckle whenever he walked around on stage. That's what dance belts are for. In the wild. These two are natural enemies, but here at SeaWorld, watch the walrus play with the killer whale cue the whale to lunge out of the pool for the walrus like a cat going for a mouse. It was pretty cool watching the animal handler slapping the whale on the nose and shouting no, no while it tried to furiously hump its way along the ground to get at the panicking walrus. That part of the show was cancelled and they put the walrus away. Frick SeaWorld. My mother was the shy awkward kid who was always friends with the teachers in high school. In an attempt to bring her out of her shell the drama teacher cast her in a really small role in some French play after the main guy didn't show up. She played a general who was teasing some peasants. Her scene required her to steal an apple, bite it, then spit it out and leave. One scene, no lines. She goes to bite the apple, accidentally swallows it, starts having an asthma attack. Cough so hard her pants fall down. Then she cried. She had to be taken off stage. That was the beginning and end of my mum's acting career. Recently went to an open mic night to see a friend perform. 
One of the early acts was this young guy who was incredibly nervous. You could hear his dry mouth through the mic. His opening gags only got the smallest pattering of sympathy laughs. It was very awkward and I felt bad for him. But to make matters worse some frickhead in the back starts heckling this kid you're not supposed to heckle at an open mic night it's hard enough even getting up there in the first place. The owner of the club then shouted from the back of the club at the heckler oh I shut up or frick off. Of course the heckler thinks this is another heckler and it spurs him on so he yells out some more bulls. To which the owner replies I'm talking to you see. The heckler then stfu but by this time with all interruptions and forgotten punk lines and staggered jokes the kid's time was up. And what music did this particular club play to tell performers their time was up? Nothing other than the Seinfeld theme tune. I saw Justin Bieber throw up on stage in Phoenix a couple years ago. Greatest. Experience. Ever. Girls crying everywhere. Parents losing their crap. And me just laughing my butt off. And I was like. Baby baby baby. Raraha hug. When I was younger. I saw brand new. Motion City soundtrack in Coheed and Cambria. During CNC set. Someone threw a shoe on stage. And the lead singer tripped on it and fell into the drum set. They did recover from this rather smoothly though. And the rest of the band had kept playing. I also had a friend who told me once about a time she saw bright eyes. She said her burst was so plastered and miserable on stage that it was actually really sad. Depressing and awkward even. Like a train wreck. And she was even embarrassed recounting the events to me. A few years back. I went to a death cab for QT concert in Columbus, Ohio. In the middle of the concert just as they were about to start a new song, Ben Gibbard's guitar was acting up. Instead of getting a sound guy roadie out there to fix it, he threw the guitar and walked off stage. He didn't come back for 20 plus minutes. Everyone in the crowd was so pee, and when he finally came back on, he blamed his crew and basically said they did crappy work. I've never been so embarrassed for a performer. He's a complete douche. A long time ago he played a week after the Decemberists played Columbus. He got real peak cause someone brought up the Decemberists show and he went on a rant about them. I was so drunk. I completely botched the song. Then I tried to start it over. Just to have the lead singer throw his guitar at me. Wasn't horrible. But Marilyn Manson at Sandwav 2013. Dude just looked drunk or stoned. Fat and tired and not only slipped on the floor and decided to just stay on the floor singing, but looked like he was just unhappy being there. In 1996 me and a bunch of my friends went to the Enid Festival at Great Woods in Mansfield MA. It was Perry Farrell's new festival and was a bunch of electronic music we'd never heard and was headlined by his band Porno for Pyrrhus. Porno for Pyrrhus had this really elaborate stage show with all these dances and all sorts of really cool crap going on along with the music. At one point they had these girls come out on stilts in these giant flowing tutu things. The girl closest to where we were sitting climbed up on this platform thing and a couple of roadies came out and started handing them torches. The girl closest to me brushed one of the torches against her dress and went up like a freaking dry Christmas tree. She fell off the platform, off her stilts, onto the bassist's equipment and the show momentarily came to a grinding halt. Lady Miss Keir from Delight had performed earlier that day and came flying out on stage and talked the crowd down. A lot of us were, shall we say, in a bit of an altered state, so this extremely helpful. Perry Farrell had run off stage with the dancer who fell and came back out shortly after and did a couple of acoustic songs. I would view from his days in jeans addiction and another one. With the guitarist while they fixed what had been broken with the bass setup. It was pretty scary, but overall they handled it like it was their job, which is good because it kind of is their job. The show must go on and whatnot. I was in the audience of a large outdoor regional semi-pro production of West Side Story. There is a build up to a very dramatic knife fight scene with the lead male and main antagonist just before intermission. They should have spent more money on the prop knives. The lead actor whipped out his trick spring loaded blade and as he did the shiny blade came away from the handle and you could see it spiraling in a large arc over his head into the bushes stage left. Both the actors and the audience followed that blade's path into the bushes. Then, he turned his attention back to his opponent. There was a sublime moment, a hesitation as they both looked down to the now empty knife handle in his hand. Then they both looked up, 
and he reached out and poked his foe with the handle, and the antagonist proceeded to die on cue, to poorly stifled laughter throughout the audience. I failed to hide my amusement worst of all. It was such a perfectly timed piece of accidental slapstick. I nearly fell out of my chair. The director came out at intermission and found me to say, We all heard how much you enjoyed the first act. It's one of my favorite theater stories now. Oh man that's one of those stories where everybody had a good laugh and I can only imagine the actors having to stay in character and trying not to laugh. Was at a Lollapalooza show in Cincinnati in the mid 90s. The Jesus Lizard had just started their main stage set. The lead singer was so drunk that in middle of their first incomprehensible song. He yelled to audience everybody get naked he proceeded to strip completely naked and run around the stage. Cincinnati police ran on stage and dragged him off. End of set. I'm confused. This thread is supposed to be for performances that went terribly wrong. I work in professional theater and have seen a lot of performances go wrong. The most catastrophic event I have ever witnessed was at a very well respected regional theater in the US. It was dress rehearsal and the staff of the theater was invited to attend including all the big bosses. They had booked a well respected veteran actress in a featured role to help sell tickets. During her solo number, the song ended with her singing a phrase, a few instrumental bars of trail off, and then she repeats the phrase. Well, after the first phrase much of the staff thought she was done and began to applaud. The actress then turns to the audience and screams, no, wait it was at that point that everything stopped. Her eyes got big, and she muttered, um, I mean, I'm not done, understand, when I say everything stopped, what I really mean is that the play came to a screeching halt. Stage management had to reset to the appropriate cues, set had to come back on so it could be taken off again, the musicians had to go back to start the phrase again, and the staff, particularly the bosses, all had to take the time to process that their big ticket contract had just wasted everyone's time money and patience because folks applauded for her a little too early. I wasn't there for this, but after an actual performance she later cornered and chewed out an audience member whom she had seen on their phone during the show. That audience member was, unfortunately, there is the plus one of the most important critic in town. The show, obviously, got panned, and closed early despite two planned extensions. To be fair with the chewing out. It's incredibly rude to be on your phone during a performance. Saying this from experience, actors and stage can see everything going on in the audience and it can be really disheartening to see people not paying attention. Plus I'm guessing the critic and his her plus one had pretty good seats, which makes it even more obvious. Outdoor festival concert, Dolly Parton was on stage in the middle of I Will Always Love You. She's belting it when she stops singing in the middle, kinda spits. Then does a little giggle and says sorry y'all, think I swallowed a bug, mind if I try that again. She takes it from the beginning of the chorus like nothing happened, could have been bad, ended up being a cool example of a professional. I was really worried when I started reading your comment that I was going to come out of it disliking Dolly Parton. Thank you for not ruining one of my role models for me. So I was going to perform at a jingle ball in Tampa the year Gangnam Style was big. Unfortunately, he was invited to play for Obama, so had to cancel. To make it up for his fans, he played a free show in a random mall in Tampa. It was super packed with people, cuz, sigh. When he started, it was painfully obvious that he was lip syncing. And then, in the second line of the first verse, the entire sound system died. It's incredibly common for dance heavy pop performances to be lip synched. It's pretty strenuous to sing and dance at that level. Here in Las Vegas there have been a couple of Cirque du Soleil shows where people have fallen in the middle of the show. One girl died in front of the audience when she fell about 60 feet to the floor. I was at a small scale play. A girl who was probably in her 30s walked out in a dress and as she entered the stage, her character threw her arms up in the air and her whole boob came out, right on stage for everyone to see. Not to mention that she was center stage because it was her character's entrance. Now this wasn't an ordinary nip slip, this was the real deal. Full booby. She played it off fantastically and just popped it back into her dress and continued on. Other than that the show was not very interesting. Not terribly wrong. But, there was a loose board on the stage. Partway through the second or third song, 
the singer was walking backwards, stepped on it, breaking his knee, then fell backwards onto some equipment, breaking his spine. He finished the song and said basically I think something's broken, we've called 911 but we're gonna keep playing until the paramedics get here. After he left, the guitarist took over singing and they played a couple more songs and finished the set early. Broken spine equals terribly wrong to me. During a night gig someone approached the singer of a pretty cool little blues band I used to listen to. It was a guy from the club, that's all I know. He said something to her between songs and she spent the next hour trying to finish her gig without breaking down and crying. The look she had about her took the energy right out of the room. I don't know what that dude said, but whatever it was it ruined the entire night. Sigh. When I was a sophomore in high school, my school performed the sound of music. I played Rolf. During 16 going on 17, my Liesl tripped and began to fall off stage. She grabbed my arm and I was so taken aback and surprised that I lost my footing and she pulled me down with her causing myself to sprain my wrist pretty badly. That's what you get you dang dirty Nazi. Was a stagehand for a play my friend was putting on last year. For the final performance, one of the actors decided to get s faced drunk. He filled one of those big reusable water bottles with vodka and drank a little more than half by the time I found it. He was late for several cues to go on stage and nearly fell into the audience in the middle of a monologue. He had the audacity to blame me after. If I hadn't confiscated his vodka, no one would have noticed. Sure, buddy, the performance wasn't ruined, I said, but it came pretty close. I'm sure things would have gotten worse if he kept drinking. If you're an actor, don't be a freaking inconsiderate piss baby child. Save the booze for the after party. The solo artist came on stage and played most of his set with his fly down. We tried to tell him, but he thought we were just cheering really strangely. Went to see a friend do a spot at a stand up show. There was girl on before him. She did a 10 minutes character set. I guess that's what you call it. She did two characters having a conversation. It was very bad. Very bad. I literally had to walk out to the bar because it hurt to watch. I stay at the bar, and about 15 minutes later she just comes running out of the venue. My friend said it was so bad, that she just stopped and ran out. The worst stand up I saw was a guy having a conversation with himself as a lovesick Shemel audience member. He would jump off the stage and say something, climb up back on the mic to respond and carry on a conversation. None of it was clever at all it was, but I love you Al, get away from me you she repeat for several minutes. I had my pedal chain crap the bed during a guitar solo, I kept putting off getting new patch cables and they finally crapped out on me mid set. I yelled into the microphone for my friend, our roadie who spent most of the set chatting up girls in the audience to come fix it, so instead of a guitar solo people got to see me kicking my pedal board and screaming Miller into the microphone. He eventually made his way to the stage and fiddled with the cables until it cut back in with some screeching feedback. Fortunately the rest of the band never missed a beat and most people thought it was just part of the act was watching an a cappella performance and the soloist completely forgot all of the lyrics. Like, all of them. So it was the rest of the group singing merrily along and the soloist just interjecting every so often with one of the repeated lines. It was so uncomfortable. I don't know if it could be described as having gone terribly wrong, but I once saw Cap Down play at the Highbury Garage the day after the saxophone broke. It was awesome, as we the crowd were asked to do the sax sounds. 150 odd people screaming ba 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 in place of an actual saxophone was such a great sound and way to spend an evening. This is one thing you can get away without a sky gig. I saw a stripper light herself on fire by accident during a part of a fire breathing act. It was my first time at a strip club for a friend's birthday and it was the only place in a relatively small university town. The bouncer had to put her out with a fire blanket. They ushered us out quietly while the whole place smelled like burnt hair. That sounds like the sickest strip club ever though. I was at a circus show with my family when I was about 6. Out come the trapeze. Women doing stunts way up in the air. The first woman was attached by her foot to the roof while the second woman was attached to the first woman. The first woman's foot slipped out of the loop holding her up. 
and they both fell about 4 meters head first into the floor. Everyone in the audience freaked the frick out and started leaving while the paramedics were putting them onto stretchers to take them to the hospital. Watching the news a few days later I learned that one of the women I think just broke her elbow, where the other woman broke her pelvis in two places. Pretty brutal thing to see for the first time at just 6 years old. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.